Things seem to be changing so fast right now, it's hard to know what to expect. If I had asked you two months ago what you would have been doing today, this probably isn't what you expected. Today, in our true story from the Bible, we're going to hear about people who expected some things from Jesus. But Jesus didn't do what they expected. Jesus doesn't always do what we expect either. Often, Jesus' power is unexpected. Before we get started with our story, let's talk about some God sightings from this week. Something beautiful or amazing or something that God did for your family. My God sighting is that I live on a farm. Well, I live right next to a farm. And there's cows on the farm that come right up to the fence beside me. But those cows have been at another farm all winter long. And this week, they came back. The farmers brought them back to this farm. So I get to spend my mornings talking to the cows and my evenings watching the cows. And yesterday, I was playing ball with my kids and the cows were just standing by the fence watching us. And it was so delightful. And it reminded me that God created all of the animals just like he created you and I. Now, pause the video and talk to your family about God sightings that you all had this week. In good and in bad times, Jesus is always working, even in ways we don't expect. Sometimes that's a happy surprise, like when Jesus leads us to a new friend. But sometimes Jesus doesn't do the things that we hope he'll do. We're gonna pause the video and I want you to talk to your family about some things you hoped Jesus would do about the coronavirus but he didn't. For me, I had hoped that Jesus would flatten the curve and take away the stay at home mandate by my birthday so that I could go out and celebrate at a restaurant. But he didn't do that. And you know what? I had a great time celebrating my birthday with my family, even though we couldn't go out. So now pause the video so you can talk about your expectations with your family. There are a lot of things we expected or at least hoped Jesus would do about the coronavirus. Jesus is powerful, but often Jesus's power is unexpected. Whoa, what was that? That was unexpected. Let's hear about a time in the Bible that Jesus didn't do what, what the people expected him to do. Before we jump in, let's gather all the supplies that you'll need. If you would like to follow along with me as I tell the story, get your Bible. You'll also need some jackets or coats or extra shirts will work too. Don't worry, we're not going anywhere. We just need them to help tell our story. And you'll need a ball, any kind of ball that you can roll in the house. Okay, I'm gonna wait while you pause the video and go gather your supplies. If you'd like to follow along with me while I tell the story in your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 19, verses 28 through 40. Now, in this scripture, Jesus was on his way into Jerusalem. People had heard about Jesus and all the wonderful things he did, so they had some pretty high expectations. People were so excited for Jesus to come. They were cheering and shouting, Hosanna! It's, it's him! It's him! They even threw their coats on the ground in his path. Now this is a way that people honored a king. But Jesus didn't walk into town over the coats. He rode on a donkey. 
That sure isn't how we'd expect a king to ride in. I would expect a hero to ride on a tall white horse, certainly not a donkey. But Jesus's power is unexpected. Now I want you to help me tell this story. So get your coats and line them up across the floor to make a path for Jesus. Does everyone have a path made? Now we need a donkey. Oh, I have some cows over here to my left, but I don't have a donkey. And I kind of think you probably don't have a donkey at your house either. But we do all have balls. So, Whoever's holding the ball is going to be the sender. We're going to pretend that this ball or the ball at your house is Jesus riding on a donkey. The sender is going to roll the ball down the path of coats. And while they do that, the rest of the family can stand and cheer, yay, Jesus, and shout Hosanna as Jesus rides in for Jerusalem. Everybody should get to be a turn to be a sender. So I'm going to have you pause the video while your family does this activity and tells the story. And when everybody's had a turn, you can turn it back on and we'll talk some more. Yay! Oh, but yay! As Jesus rode in, people shouted Hosanna and cheered for him, just like we just did in our houses. The leaders of Jerusalem weren't excited about Jesus, though. They didn't want things to change. They didn't want Jesus to be king. They were even making plans to kill him. They were grumbling and groaning and whining and complaining. Jesus could have come into Jerusalem and proclaimed himself king. Many people probably expected him to. They were tired of being ruled by the Romans, and they didn't always like the way their leaders treated them either. But Jesus didn't do what they wanted or expected. That makes me wonder. Why do you think Jesus doesn't always do what we want him to? There are some things that I would really like Jesus to do for me, and I pray about those things. But Jesus might have other things in mind for me. Jesus might have something even better planned for me than what I ask for. Jesus knew that the people of Jerusalem and all of us need much more than a great king ruling the land. Jesus had something so much better in mind than just a kingdom on earth. He wants us to be part of his heavenly kingdom forever. So even though he didn't stop the leaders from plotting to kill him, and next week, we're going to find out that they really did kill him. Jesus was up to something really good and unexpected. That's because Jesus' power is unexpected. When he doesn't do what we want, it might be because he's up to something better, even if it doesn't seem better to us right now. Now, we're going to pause the video again and talk about this question. What good things is Jesus doing through this time we're in right now? Okay, are you ready to get moving? I'm going to give you instructions. And I want you to try to follow them as quickly as you can. 
You have to listen carefully because the instructions are going to keep changing pretty fast. Are you ready? Here we go. Touch your toes. What if you can? Reach for the sky. Do three jumping jacks. One, two, Touch something three. that's blue. <laughs> Give everyone a high five. Wait, Touch your toes again. Ah. Now spin in a circle. I got spin in a what? Spin circle. in a circle. Oh. Sit down. Stand up. Hop on one foot five times. One, two, Give everybody three, a high five. Do three jumping jacks. Reach to the sky. Sit down. Stand up. Go find something blue. Spin in a circle five times. Sit down. Stand up. Do three jumping jacks. Sit down. Phew. It was hard to keep up with that game, wasn't it? We're going to pause the video and talk to your family about this question. How did you feel as you tried to keep up with all the changes in this game? You never knew what I was going to ask you to do next during the game. It was always unexpected. We don't always know what's coming next in life either. With the coronavirus, it seems like things change every single day. But Jesus knows what's coming next, and we can always trust that he's in control even when he doesn't do things the way we expect, even when his power is unexpected. Jesus doesn't always do what we think he should. People expect him to be king on earth. But instead, Jesus died. That didn't seem as good. But then, Jesus came back to life. Now that sure was unexpected. Now, Jesus invites us to a much better kingdom in heaven. When Jesus' power is unexpected, we can trust that he has something better, even if we don't understand it right now. Take a minute to think about the ways that your family has been able to help each other during this time. Or maybe you'll think about people outside of your family like doctors or nurses, or the people that work in the grocery stores. Now, I want you to pause the video and as a family, I want you to talk about those helpers and pray for them. Then I want you to take a minute in your family and thank Jesus for the things he's done for us. Ready? Let's pray. Those are some awesome prayers. Now, when this video ends, I'd like you to draw a picture of something good or unexpected that Jesus has done during this time. Have your mom or dad or grandparents take a picture of what you drew and send it to me. They can put it on my Facebook page, they can text it to me, or they can send it to my email address which is children at warrantonumc.org. I'm gonna take the pictures and put them all together to show everybody all the things that Jesus has done that are good or unexpected for the families in our church. Praising Jesus is a great way to remind ourselves of all the good things he's done for us. So we're gonna get up and we're gonna praise him right now. We can praise Jesus all the time. We can praise him in the morning. We can praise him in the afternoon. We can praise him at night. We can even praise Jesus in the middle of the night if we're having trouble sleeping. Because we trust his power, 
even when it is unexpected. You're watching Life Tree Kids. 